everyone, how are you doing? Soul MCA here. Welcome to the channel where we take the mystery out of the music. Practical lesson number four. I want to talk about strings just a little bit today because strings can be a giant topic. Uh, obviously, there are different kinds of basses. There are four string basses. There are five string basses. There are six string basses. So strings will be sold in the amount that you need. Uh, make sure you request the amount that you need. And for five string players, this is important. There are two different setups on five strings. You have the five string like this one that I play, where you've got your B, E, D, uh, B, E, A, D, and G. But then there are five strings where it's E, uh, A, D, G, and then I believe C is your, um, or is it a higher B? Uh, anyway, your, 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 there's a string above your G, okay? Um, and you've got to make sure you're buying the right strings to supplement that. If you do have one of those, those five strings seem to be kind of rare where they, they make the E string the lowest, but make the, um, the highest string, the different string. Usually your five strings will have a lower string, but just a fun fact in case you didn't know that. Uh, and that's gotta be great. Cause it's basically like you got a six string without the, the B string. Now there are two basic types of um, strings. You got flat, flat wounds and round wounds. Uh, flat wounds are, I don't want to say they sound a little more dead, but they, they don't have as much um, like grit or like that metallic sound. Like when you get um, round wound strings and you put them on at first, you'll probably hear like a lot of skrr, skrr, like, like fingers in a chalking board and that you can hear like every brush on the strings, at least until you um, work them in a little bit uh, where flat wounds, um, sound a little more, I don't want to say dull. Dull is not the word I want to use, but they're lower in tone, more even in tone, I guess. Um, they don't have as much of that, that bright end. All right. And, uh, a lot of guys will use those on, um, for like jazz type walking bass lines because a lot of those uprights pretty much, they have flat wound strings. Flat wound strings are a lot softer. Uh, if you rub your hand against them, it's almost like, um, I don't want to say silk, but it, it just, it, it feels a lot nicer compared to a round wound, which will cut your fingers up a little bit more. There's like, you could probably hear this. You hear that? That's the coating or the sheath that's on, um, a, a round wound string. Uh, whereas that's a little flatter with a flat wound and flat wounds go for a longer period of time. Uh, they're, they're good for, you know, like country music. They're good for, um, they're good for jazz, uh, walking bass lines. Honestly, I, I've even seen some gospel guys use them. So, you know, it's all about your personal preference. If you can make them work, uh, most of the gospel cats are rocking round wound strings, uh, and really bright ones. So they, they come in different measurements. Uh, usually I know all this stuff. I teach a clinic where I teach all this stuff, but I don't know it off the top of my head and I'm not pulling up my notes. Um, but they have different measurements. So if you want deeper tones, you want to go for higher numbers, like above a hundred. Um, 120, I think is if you want to start getting real fat B strings, uh, and then the, the hot, the lower, the number, like in your eighties or seventies is the smaller strings and more thin. They'll give you a, um, a higher pitched sound, uh, kind of like a guitar. And so if you look at the measurements on guitar strings, they'll be a lot lower than they would be on a uh, bass. Now, um, each company does things differently. I've seen them put all of the strings in one case. I've seen some of them put, uh, strings in individual cases. Like I think DR does a lot of that stuff. Uh, and the telltale sign that you have DR strings. I don't know if you can even see that, but at the bottom of this bridge, don't even, don't get me started on why the bottom of this is, looks the way it does. But I don't know if you guys could even see that. You see how those different colors, different colors there. That is a telltale sign that you probably have. DR strings on your bass or the bass you're playing. Cause sometimes you'll just go in a store. Um, but there are some DRs that are just straight golds down there too. So you want to get strings, you know, I'm talking about different thicknesses and stuff. You want to get strings that, that work for you, uh, work for the tone that you're going for work for, you want to pick strings. And this is where I guess the practical part comes in that will fit the majority of music that you play. Now I pretty much am just a church boy. I play basically all church stuff. Um, there was a time in my life where I had to help out a friend and do some stuff that wasn't church. Um, and so my sound probably wasn't optimal for that, but then I just did some EQ and things to kind of take care of what I, to meet what I needed to meet and then make sure I wasn't playing gospel fills, um, in a section that wasn't gospel because that didn't call for that. 
So you want to pick, um, even in gospel, there's just so many different genres. There's so many different, um, different subsections, if you will. Uh, and so you want to pick a sound of string that's going to fit most of the things that you do. Okay. The, the thickness of strings, believe it or not, can affect your speed. So when I started, uh, young and inexperienced, I really liked Marcus Miller. Uh, I knew him and I knew Victor Wooten and I know that these guys were bad. And so when I went to the store and I saw a DR had fat beams by Marcus Miller, I said, man, Marcus Miller fat beams. I mean, the guy can slap. They probably got a great tone. They probably have a nice little growl to him. And so I got him and I was playing and playing and, uh, I'd hear other guys like blazing on bass. And I'm like, how are they getting so fast? Because I'm over here like, uh, and for me personally, the fat beams are slowing me down. So then uh, a friend of mine finally was like, yo, bro, like he played my bass. And he was like, why are these strings so thick? And I said, he's like, what are these? I said, the Marcus Miller um, fat beams. And I have nothing against Marcus Miller fat beams. Let's clear the air here. Travis Dykes is another YouTuber. He's out here. And I heard him recently in a video say that he has fat beams. And I'm like, what? Uh, and that dude is blazing fast. So nothing against them. Um, but when I personally made the switch to a higher gauge, um, like a mid gauge or a brighter gauge, my speed went up instantly, like instantly two times faster. Uh, that may not be the testimony for you, but it was definitely the testimony for me. So if you're out there struggling with speed, try something as simple as getting lighter gauge strings first. See if that, if that helps increase your speed. Um, and, and just go from there. All right. But there, there is a lot of tone. Uh, a lot of signature of some of these great artists that you hear that are even in their strings. Uh, a lot of the sound that we play does come from our hands, but the strings do make a difference too. Uh, can make you sound differently. And I think that might be all I want to say on strings because you can really talk about strings for days and days and days. There is something else. Uh, I've said it in like two videos now, you know, your strings, they, 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 um, stretch and they, they kind of break down the round wounds. There's a core and then the, the round wound around them, the flat wounds are a little better, but there's like an inner core in these, these round wounds. And, you know, when you tighten, same with flat wounds, but when you tighten your base, you're stretching that out. When you loosen your base, you're making that shrivel a little bit, which makes it a little, initially it's not a problem, but over time it starts making a little more, less and less uh, elastic. Think about, a, I don't even think they have these anymore. So some of you may not even get the, this analogy, but a slinky. You know, the slinky where you kind of keep it in your hand, it goes, maybe I'll, let me put a picture here because some of y'all may not know what I'm even talking about. Let me put a picture right here. So with that slinky, if you um, stretch it out, initially it does, it's not a problem, not a problem, but then it starts to get kinks in it, whatever the case is, it, it, it's harder and harder for it to stretch back. Even a rubber band, that would have been better. Uh, initially, when you get a rubber band, it's great. It's elastic, stretches, boom, no problem. But over time, years, whatever the case is, um, it starts to get to a point where it just eventually snaps. Uh, and that can happen. That would take a really long time on bass strings. But what I need you to get is how the elasticity kind of goes out over time. And so the right practice and the correct thing to do is after you're done playing every time you should detune your strings, which I'm going to do now because I think I'm done for the day, detune your strings. And what that also does is it relieves the tension. There's a rod that runs through here the middle of your base called a tension rod. Um, that's another video. It, it can be accessed different places. Mine is up here at the top here. You can see this thing. I lost the screws for it. So it kind of just, it hangs out there. Um, some of them you can access down here. Um, I think those are the only two places I've ever seen them either up there or down here. All right. And that's a tension rod. And that tension rod is what allows your, your base neck to keep straight, to be bowed, um, to, to be over bowed. Um, and so you want that not to have too much tension because it can snap or it can start to make your base, uh, uh, bow the wrong direction. And then you're using more and more, uh, strain to press the note. And that's what we talk about when we say action, I'm getting into so many other things. Action is when your strings are too far off or, or <laughs> high action is when your, your strings are too far away from your fretboard and you've got to push down more and it. it can put a strain on your wrist, which I can't afford. So I try to keep my action really low um, to where you can put like a credit card or something through it. And it takes minimal energy for me to push down the string and make it 
um, be able to pluck it and make a noise. Or sometimes if you have the action set really low and you've got a good bass, you can just press it with nothing on your, your plucking hand and still hear a note nice and clean. And so you want to, when you're done, um, loosen your strings so that it relieves and you'll feel it. Like if you kind of even hold your neck as you loosen the strings, you'll feel the tension relieve from your, uh, bass. And that is important. That's another part of this practical. This is where the practical comes in this. You want your instrument to last for a long time. And even if you get your stuff set up, you get a, a really nice setup. I guarantee you, I promise you, if you keep it tuned and just keep it in the bag, uh, whether you're playing it every day or not, eventually it's just slowly slipping a little bit more and more of the tension rod. And then eventually you're going to start feeling different. Um, you, you might start hearing some things smack against, against your fretboard like that because the fretboard is moving and where the strings are, are laying with the action is moving because you've kept those strings tight. Last thing I want to say practically too, when you're, uh, you know what, maybe I'll just say that in tuning. Yeah. I'll do another video on tuning. And I'll leave that for another day. All right. I'm Soul MCA. The good musicians get the gigs. The cocky ones don't keep them. Like, subscribe, enjoy. I'll see you next time. Take it easy.